What's up guys, welcome to another video. And this video is gonna be about how I quit my role as an Azure administrator. I'm gonna be explaining a lot more about why. So the what does an Azure administrator do video is the most popular video on my channel and I don't currently work in that role anymore. So I worked as an Azure administrator for 10 months and during that time, I learned so much. That was my first cloud job. Um, so I had that introduction to working in the cloud, um, working with Azure, many different aspects of working with Azure, things such as, you know, configuring Azure VPN, Azure join devices, working with Intune, Azure backup, different roles with Active Directory and so much more. So I learned so much from working as an Azure administrator. I'm gonna be explaining why I left that role. So please enjoy. So I think the first reason why I left my role as Azure administrator was that the role was super fast paced. And this is not for every Azure administrator role, of course but it's more to do with the nature of the company I was working for. Um, and this is not a bad thing. Uh, some roles are fast paced, some are less fast paced. Um, but this role in particular was quite fast paced. There was always a lot of work to do. Um, there was many projects. You, you worked on multiple projects at a time. And I think for myself, that helped me to develop very, very quickly but it also caused a bit of stress <laughs> as well. And I'm not scared of stress because jobs aren't meant to be easy, but I think for myself, I prefer kind of a slower paced environment where I can focus on projects I'm working on and produce the most quality for whatever project I'm on at the time. So I think that's the first reason. And like I said, that's not all as your administrative roles, just that company and that role that I was in. The second reason I quit my job as Azure administrator is that I had the aspiration to work at a larger firm. So the role of an Azure administrator, I was working at a small firm, an MSP, which is a managed service provider. And it was quite small, I'd say about 60 employees or something around, something around 60 employees. Um, and at that stage of my career, I really wanted to work at a large firm, which would be great for my CV and just great for this stage of my career. I think working at startups and smaller firms is great, but it was my personal aspiration at the time to work at a more prestigious company with a bigger name. So maybe that's a little bit selfish. It was great to work at a smaller company and I did 10 months. I would have liked to do up to a year, but I do feel like that was my aspiration. And when the opportunity came, I had to take that opportunity. The third reason for me leaving was the job hop effect or just salary, basically. It's a well-known fact that if you move around and switch roles every one to two years, you get that jump in salary. So for myself, when I saw the opportunity to get that salary jump, I took that um, very quickly. And I don't think for myself, I'm going to be job hopping and going, uh, doing one year at a company and hopping over to another one. I think once I find a company that there's a lot to do and a lot to learn and the competitiveness of the pay is really good, then I can settle there and stay for a long time. And so far where I'm working now provide to that. So I'm not going to be job hopping every year or two years. I don't think. <laughs> God knows the future, but my goal is to find somewhere that I'm really settled and that I'm learning a lot and developing really well and settle and stay there for a decent amount of time. Not forever, but you know, three, four, five years, maybe, who knows. So another reason that I left was the opportunity to get into the cybersecurity space. So at some point, during that role, although I was working with cloud administration, I also had the opportunity to work on a few projects with cybersecurity, um, a few projects to do with antiviruses and 
VPNs and things of that sort. And I took a bit of an interest in working in cybersecurity and developing that part of my skill set. So I knew that the next phase of my career, I wanted to get into a cybersecurity role. That role came about, I applied for it online and I managed to get a job offer. So when I got that job offer, I really considered it quite highly because I knew that that is the area I wanted to move into next for my career. So I ended up taking that offer. Finally, the last reason that I left is that I got a great offer from the company that I applied to that I could not refuse. In the tech industry and in the working world in general, it's important to look out for self sometimes, yes, um, because the employer will look out for themselves also. So I'm not saying that it's all about the money, but what I am saying is that take opportunities to better yourself, whether that's better experience, whether that's better pay, whether that's better opportunities to network, whatever the case may be, um, do what's best for you a lot of the time when applying for jobs and that sort of thing. Um, for myself, I got an offer I couldn't refuse in terms of all of those areas, pay, networking, um, prestige in terms of the company and all of those sorts of things. So I ended up going ahead and taking that offer. And since I did, it's been good. It's been going well and I've been learning a lot. So that's really positive. So in the comments section, please do tell me what you do for a living, what sort of technologies you work with and how you're finding your current job role. Or if you're currently searching for a job, do tell us how that experience is going, what sort of skills you have and what sort of jobs you're looking for. Thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.